Good thing. Culinary science and food service management is a four-year. Cross for those who want to be a scientific chef by integrating scientific and culinary skills. All students in this program will be studying at Himungus Institute of Technology Lagerbahn for two years and another year in Switzerland. During two years at KMITL, the program will focus on food science and technology along with artistic culinary skills. Moreover, our students will also be focusing on authentic Thai cuisine along with international culinary skills. And another one more year, students will attend an extra opportunity to study in Switzerland at the Business and Hotel Management School in Lausanne, Switzerland. The first six months in Switzerland will engage the students into an intensive course on Western culinary skill and food service management. For the next six months, students will have the opportunity to work in PET as full-time internship with well-known hotels and restaurants. Our program also intends to offer German language as elementary course for our protective students. This course would offer efficient computation of academic course as well as work communication during study in Switzerland. Our new program has been carefully designed not only for Thai students who want to be a scientific chef but also for international students who aim to become efficient in authentic Thai cuisine in addition. The program designed for specialized courses including Thai food cardio as well as fruit and vegetable carving. This special course also focuses on preparing international students on some basic Thai language skills, which would assist them in daily life and workplace communication. The students who graduate from culinary science and food service management, put them at KMITL, will be honored with a triple degree. Bachelor of Science, Culinary Science and Food Service Management, King Mungus Institute of Technology, Lagrabang. Bachelor Degree in Culinary Arts, Business and Hotel Management School, Switzerland. Bachelor Degree in Culinary Arts, Robert Gordon University, United Kingdom. Cross over your limitation. Design your own future from becoming a traditional chef to becoming a fusion scientific chef. We guarantee more jobs opportunities in collaboration with international support aliens waiting to become. Chef with scientific knowledge as well as cooking skill. Full service business operators. The experts in problem solving skill in food chain operation related to full service business. Researcher or consultant in food service business or a food freelancer. Become a part of our family truth. Put them. Culinary science and food service management at KMITL. Getting to know more about us, worldwide.kmitl.ac.th. Tell plus six six eight eight six five one six four six six. Email put them at kmitl at gmail.com. Line ID put them four five. Facebook culinary science and food service management. คณะอุตสาหกรรมอาหารสถาบันเทคโนโลยีพระจอมเกล้าเจ้าคุณทหารลาดกระบังเป็นสถาบันอุดมศึกษาชั้นนำด้านวิทยาศาสตร์และเทคโนโลยีของประเทศหลักสูตรระดับปริญญาตรีสามหลักสูตรสาขาวิชาวิทยาศาสตร์และเทคโนโลยีการอาหารสาขาวิชาเทคโนโลยีการบัตรและอุตสาหกรรมอาหารสาขาวิชาวิศวกรรมแปรรูปอาหารหลักสูตรระดับปริญญาโทสามหลักสูตรสาขาวิชาวิทยาศาสตร์การอาหารสาขาวิชาเทคโนโลยีการบริการอาหารและการจัดการสาขาวิชาการจัดการความปลอดภัยอาหารหลักสูตรระดับปริญญาเอกดึงหลักสูตรสาขาวิชาวิทยาศาสตร์การอาหารหลักสูตรนานาชาติคณะของเราเน้นการพัฒนาผลิตภัณฑ์อาหารนวัตกรรมและโครงการวิจัยเพื่อนำไปสู่การสร้างเทคโนโลยีทางอาหารที่สามารถแก้ไขปัญหาได้จริงเราจะเป็นสถาบันแนวหน้าที่ผลิตบุคลากรและสร้างนวัตกรรมเพื่อพัฒนาอุตสาหกรรมอาหารให้เป็นที่ยอมรับในระดับสากลเ
Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome for all participants and guest speakers. It is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the World Food Series at Food Industry Webinar Season 2, Episode 3 in this December. Everyone know that this month has a special event, right? Yes, this is the Christmas festival on the 25 December, that means on the next week. And I think it's all around the world will be celebrating about this event. Um, as we are the part in the food technologies and food areas, our faculty would like to participate the, to serve it on this event in the topic of Christmas food and traditional story. And without our special guest today, we cannot speak about this topic. So we had a special tea guest speaker uh, to be honest to our faculty today. Um, this is uh, Mr. Bruno uh, Berman's lecturers in business and uh, F&B and Mr. Mr. Sharns, Leonard, Executive Chef of Culinary Program Leaders, and Dr. Anthony Earp, International, uh, International Academic Dean's uh, Business Hotel Management School, or we know as BHSNS Switzerland. The, they are the, our cooperation to set up this event together with us. And I am, um, app, app, um, I appreciate for um, all the speaker knowledge to share with us today. So the School of Food Industry and Behetimia Switzerland had a long way collaborations. And as you see on the clip before we opened the webinar, we set up the international program together that had a triple degree that we are learn this uh, international program we know as the Cleanly Science and Food Soviet Management, or the short name is CLUSEM. And this one is very special when you graduate as like a scientific chef, you got to learn about science and technology here, tears at King Mongkut is still technology like about OKMITL. And another one year with the knowledge about the Western crises and internship periods at the BHMS Switzerland one year. So they got the 3D KMITL, BHMS Switzerland, and another one is the BHMS partner that is Robert Gordon University. So this program had to be, we had a long connections. So in order, I think the, everyone know about the, our partner very well now. So I think everyone is waiting for this moment. No, so for in order to not waste the time, and I think everyone is waiting for this seminar. So before that, I would like to thank you again to the speaker in order to our corporations and if anyone listens or when you listen to the speaker and you have the question you can uh, leave the questions on the chat box in zoom or we also live in the facebook live at the school of food industry kmitl too if you have the question you can leave in the chat box or you can leave in the facebook uh, and we can ask in the, our speaker today. So I think so everyone is waiting for this moment. And I think that's at the BHMA too, right? And we had a special speaker. Um, I heard from BHMA that they are in wise Mr. Bruno because he looked like Santa Claus, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we got the rios and the car here and I think it's not sweating the time so welcome Mr. Bruno and give the big hand to him so Mr. Bruno uh, the floor is yours good morning from Switzerland to good afternoon in Thailand now today's Christmas tradition have originated in Central Europe especially in Switzerland Germany Austria, France, in the northern part of Italy, and have the origin of the Christian celebration of the birth of Jesus. For many traditional Europeans, the season's main event is actually Christmas Eve. On the 24th of December, celebrated with a grand family meal and then followed by a church service at midnight. This celebration has been for centuries a very meaningful and traditional reunion of the families, and this tradition is still observed by most families nowadays. 
Others focus more on Christmas Day and on the culture of gift giving. Since it is celebrated during the cold and very snowy winter season, when the nights are very long and the days are very short, most people are celebrating in well-heated homes on open fireplaces with warm clothes and because of the cold climate, special food and beverages are in the center of this event. There are many food traditions during this time. Many of them are now seen all over the world. Most Swiss families bake their special Christmas pastries and cookies according to their ancestors' recipe and still very traditional. There are so many different recipes and these vary from region to region. These cookies are then packaged nicely and given as a gift to the neighbors, to the friends and families. Today, you can buy these traditional cookies in every nation around the world during the Christmas time. Gifts are a major tradition. And in the past were traditional presents, warm socks or pullover made out of wool but nowadays it is replaced by many different commercial items. The countdown of Christmas starts 24 before uh, uh, 24 days before Christmas, as in many parts of Europe, people in Switzerland are tra enjoy tradition of counting the days until Christmas Eve. This is usually done with the Christmas calendar, also known as an advent calendar, since this period of time is called advent time of the year, which counts the 24 days from the 1st to the 24th of December. A store-bought or homemade Christmas calendar can be seen in most Swiss homes and during the holiday season. It is a fun way to count down the days until Christmas Eve. One of the most celebrated traditions are in the family visits to the traditional Christmas markets, which are seen in every city, village or town with food, chestnuts, Christmas music, traditional drinks, and to warm up the cold time. These Christmas markets are now a major attraction all over the world and visitors come to Switzerland to experience this atmosphere. Let us have now a look at such atmospheres and how it really feels like. Happy Christmas. Joyeux, Joyeux Noël. Noël. Johnny Vianachte. Buon Natale a tutti. Goyel. Merry Christmas. Frohe Weihnachten. Joyeux Noël. Happy Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Frohe Weihnachten. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Oh, yay! I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Hello everybody in KMITL, pleasure to meet you. My name is Shep Leonard and I'm here responsible for all of the culinary arts and all of our student feeding and our Christmas specials here at BHMS in wonderful city of Lucerne in Switzerland. Because of all those cold climates and dark nights, food is a really, really important part of Christmas here in Europe. It's the time of the year when all the family come together, everybody cooks together, and enjoys their time together. There are so many, there are so many different traditional regions and dishes here in Switzerland, equally as there are in different parts of Europe. In Switzerland and the German-speaking regions of Europe, families usually look forward to eating meals which are normally not prepared during the rest of the year, so special lavish meals cooked, and usually the whole family is participating in cooking. Decorating the table, the room, the main dishes are arranged for a variety of traditional dishes. And we're going to talk about a few of those uh, variety of dishes that we're going to eat around Europe. 
Everything's placed in the middle of the table and mother or father can fill the plates and everyone kind of eats far too much. The British way of Christmas is, of course, with roast turkey, roast goose, all those trimmings, all those roast potatoes, vegetables and stuffings. And it's really, really filling. And there's always plenty left over the following day. In Italy and the Latin-speaking regions of Europe, like Spain, uh, there's a real range of dishes, roasted hams. In Spain, for example, they have this wonderful dish called Cordero Asado, roast pork, with lavish grazing buffets, cured meats, cheeses, and cava, which is a wonderful Spanish sparkling wine. And what would be an Italian Christmas without panettone, a joy for the senses with its unique citrus aroma and texture. In fact, I have one right here. Look at this wonderful packaging as well. Let's just, let's just take that out of that box right there. Oh, oh. oh, that's just incredibly special. I'm going to have a little bit of that later. In the Scandinavian part of Europe, it's a little bit different. They're not eating panettone. They're eating wonderful, wonderful cured salmons, smoked fish, and of course, this famous uh, roasted pork dish called Yulskinka, or Yulskinka ham. And they have eat wonderful, special sweet treats as well, like spiced cookies, part of a family buffet, and that no one person has to invest all of their time in the kitchen. Here at BHMS, we are involving our students to prepare traditional Christmas meals. This Christmas, in a few days' time, it's very exciting including some Asian, Indian, and vegetarian dishes to serve all tastes. We always like to really spoil our students at this time of year, not only, but especially this time of year, and we make a mixture of plated delicious appetizers, a wonderful buffet of main dishes to please all of those who are here with us at Christmas time. Let's go and have a look at some of the preparations. So behind me, it's behind me, some of these are the guys who are preparing, waiting for our students to join them with our students, our professional team of professional chefs who are going to prepare the Christmas meal ready for our students in a few days' time. It's going to be a fantastic, fantastic occasion with those lovely meats, salmons, and vegetarian dishes. Okay, let's go back and have a look back in the kitchen because I'm going to make some food for you today. And I want to show you how to make a real special Swiss treat. Hi, Danny. So I'm going to go back into our other kitchen. Ah, can't wait. I've got some other specialities here, as you can see. I wish you could smell this. This is a bit special. I'm looking forward to trying a bit of that later. I've got some other specialities here as well. So back to Switzerland, where some of our families also love to cook and eat fondue at Christmas. We do love, our, do love our fondue here at Christmas, and this is our nice reshore set that we're going to serve our fondue on, and lots of Swiss families will be enjoying a wonderful cheese fondue of the Christmas period, and of course, uh, our wonderful gingerbread cake, which we have normally after our cheese fondue, and the gingerbread cake, which is not only a specialty Switzerland, because soccer is not like a hard thing. <laughs> It's also a speciality here of Lucerne. Here it is, the Lucerne Lake. I wish you could be here to smell this. This is absolutely spectacular. It's wonderful gingerbread spices, very heavy in flavor, fantastic taste. In fact, I'm going to have a taste. Let's have a look. Mm. 
Oh, that's just that. You know when you have that perfect taste of Switzerland or perfect taste of Christmas? This is it. Let me have a take. Mmm, that's fantastic. But now, I'm going to make for you that fondue dish, that cheese fondue. And we're going to make this over here. The cheese fondue, I mean, there's, there's a few different types of fondue. Fondue meaning just, of course, cooking in one pot. Serving, serving on um, the middle of the table. And important is that no one has to cook. You know, when you've made it, you serve it on the table, and everyone can sit around the table and just dig in. It's this wonderful feasting kind of flavor. So the cheese fondue, what I've got inside here, this is, first of all, my special cooking pot. This is called a capelon. It is a French word, and it's the type of pot we use for cooking and serving the, the cheese fondue in. And what I've got inside this pot are these ingredients. I have them put here. So, for example, I have, naturally, I have the cheese. Here we have this famous cheese with the holes in from Emmental. And here we have famous Gruyere cheese, which, of course, is from the region of Gruyere in Switzerland. And we've got equal quantities of those two cheeses grated up, as you can see, inside my tafelon behind me. But that's not all. It's not just melted cheese. And as well as that, we're going to put some wonderful dry Swiss wine inside. And um, I've already it up, and I've put this in already for you. I've also got just one piece of garlic which has been peeled. Just whole, just put inside, just peeled. That's our ingredients. And then, of course, famously, we have our alcoholic schnapps, which we then mix together with a little bit of our corn flour. And that is already mixed together, and a little bit is being put inside to our cheese mixture. So in there, we've got the cheese, we've got the garlic, we've got the wine, and we've got the schnapps with the corn flour all together. And all we have to do is heat it nice and slow, it's just stick, and keep stirring it. Now, should you want a, a non-alcoholic version, that's also possible, you can replace the wine and the schnapps with some apple juice. So some people don't like to have like that flavor of alcohol. Some people, due to cultural beliefs, don't drink alcohol. So it's still possible to eat the cheese fondue without those products. So it's something for everybody. Now, our cheese is just melting here with those other ingredients inside. And then when it's melted, because, it, because it's Swiss cheese, it all comes together. And we're going to garnish that with a little bit of, when it's cooked, of course, a little bit of paprika. Which I have here, just normal sweet paprika, not the spicy one, but you can put spicy one on. You can put anything you want in cheese fondue. It's a blank canvas. We could put a bit of chili inside, we could put anything you want, truffles, anything that at all. Now, the important is when you're making the cheese fondue that you must use Swiss cheese. One, because it's great for our economy, only joking. But of course, it is very special cheese in terms of the qualitative nature. It's a cheese made from very high quality fresh Swiss milk. And the cheese is only made from the region where the milk is produced from the cows. So we can't take milk from Gruyere and make Emmental cheese. We can only make Emmental cheese with the milk produced in Emmental. And then of course, they have different storage processes of salting the cheese when it's being pressed into its shape and also in a warm cellar, in a cold cellar, with humidity or not with humidity. And this makes, with the sizes and the type of storage, makes a different flavor of cheese. And because they're all made from really high quality Swiss milk, we have an incredible qualitative product, which binds nicely together in this cheese fondue. Now I've tried making cheese fondue in other parts of the world, Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, it's coming together. It didn't look so fantastic when I first started, but now it's starting to melt. And all those flavors, it smells amazing. And all those textures are binding together. It's going to make a lovely, thick, but smooth, creamy-looking cheese mixture, which we can dip the bread in, which I'm going to. And important is eating nice and slowly so it doesn't get too burnt on the bottom. Yeah, I've tried making this with, uh, in different parts of the world. 
with different types of cheese. And I found that with the different types of cheese, because of the storage processes, because of the way they're made, because, because of the qualitative nature of the milk or not, they, they tend to, when you're making them, they split and they don't coagulate properly. It only works the best with good quality Swiss cheese. So hopefully you get to come to Switzerland one day and try some of this amazing cheese fondue, which we eat in summer as well as winter. But of course, in winter, we like to eat all those nice warm winter foods. But there are other versions of fondue. We can fill this with a nice flavored stock, a bit like a steamboat or, a, or like, a, uh, like a soup. And then we can put some meats or vegetables or fish inside to cook. And we could also fill it with oil and sort of sort of deep fry our, our foods, if you like, or shallow, you know, not a low temperature deep frying with uh, meats and fish and vegetables as well. So there's a few different versions of fondue, but all of them are popular here in Switzerland at Christmas time. Right, now our fondue is slowly getting nice and melted, coagulating together. But look how lovely and smooth that's becoming. And absolutely no fat splitting to the top. And it's a wonderful, slightly yellow colour. The aroma is just so amazing. Again, like the leaf, I've come standing here next to this panettone, this Swiss gingerbread, and making the Swiss cheese fondue, and the flavours are just out of this world. And it's just that really lovely, warm, Christmassy type flavour that you associate with this time of year. So that's coming to the boil now. And you can see, just comes to the boil once, just can take on to cook, good stir. Ah, oh, yes. Can you see that? How lovely and smooth that is. Oh, that's so good. And how it's lovely coagulated together, just the right consistency. The consistently coarse fall sticking to the bread. So let me move that out of the way. So we're going to finish our fondue. Put a little bit of paprika. Little bit of nice, fresh, cracked black pepper on top. And if you're lucky, at the end of the fondue, we get to have the piece of garlic that's in the bottom, or we get to have when it sort of starts to cook on the bottom, it gets almost like a parmesan crisp on the bottom at the end, and that's that you can lift off. Oh, it's so good. So here I have some famous little forks, which we use for our fondue. And you can dip pieces of fruit inside, apple or pear. The acidity helps cut through the cheese. Um, we could also have again, nice glass of that wonderful dry Swiss wine with our fondue, of course. Or for those who don't take alcohol, we can also have just a glass of apple juice. Again, there's a lot of acidity in there and that will be lovely as well with our cheese fondue. So. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. So let's have a little go. So we dip our cheese, dip our fork with our bread inside our cheese fondue. Give that a little turn. Don't lose any cheese after all, do we? See that lovely coating, how it's just coated the bread. Perfect consistency. Shouldn't run off too runny. And here we go. Ready? Mmm. Oh, that's so good. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to eat more of that when I leave you. But whatever you eat this Christmas, the BHMS Culinary Academy and myself, Chef Leonard, wishes you all a very, very Merry Christmas. A prosperous and fantastic New Year. So Merry Christmas, everybody. For culinary management graduates, there is a world of opportunity open in the field of entrepreneurship. Every first class meal for an airline or ready meal in a supermarket is created by a food development chef in a development kitchen, where chefs allow their knowledge and creativity to develop and shine. Opening your own restaurant or bar or chain 
managing industrial sized catering companies, becoming a food entrepreneur, a private chef for the stars, or on private yachts, being involved in industry or food production. All of these fantastic professions are possible to achieve with a culinary education. Learning how to set up your own business might sound like a dream, but we are in the business of making dreams come true. Our culinary graduates learn exactly how it is possible to open a business and turn this into an entrepreneurial success. Hi, my name is Fikrat Amir Bayli, or as my friends call me here, Frank. I'm a second year culinary student at BHMS and I'm from Azerbaijan. So my first internship, I worked at the Chede Andermat, which is a luxurious ski resort up in the mountains. It's beautiful, it's snow covered caps of mountains and everything. And it's beautiful for skiing as well. And I had my first internship for five months there. And the first month I had it in the Asian kitchen and then four months in the Garmanje. And definitely I developed lots of skills. The first would be naturally the hand maneuvering because beforehand I couldn't really work that quickly with my hands and that bothered me a lot. But in the Chede Andermat that helped a lot. But number one I should say was the inspiration, the creativity, because there I would make Amuzbush something different every day. And that really pushed me forward because I had a limited number of ingredients and all of these ingredients were very high end. So you had to somehow think of something different yet delicious every day. And it had to be, of course, bite-sized. So all of these challenges together really pushed my creativity forward. And it made me look at food in a different way. Not just something edible, also like a culinary art. That's really what art is. It's beautiful. Five years after graduation, I liked to be my own head chef. I like to operate my own kitchen, my own restaurant, but not just any restaurant. I love to have a new American style restaurant, preferably located in the western part of America. If I had a specific location, I'd say Atlanta, Georgia, because of the multicultural nature of the city. It's beautiful with people from different ethnic backgrounds and the food there is magnificent. Nowadays, the Christmas event has become very commercialized all over the world. Christmas is now known around the world, and it's actually the only event that's spread around the globe, and everybody celebrates it on the same day. Around the world, food and family are the key components of this celebration. From the lavish decor of building oversized Santa Claus to the tree decorated and whole buildings being lighted up. Christmas gifts are an exchange and the key theme is the children's enjoyment. I have worked and traveled around the world and have spent many Christmases overseas. And the mix of the commercials like in Hong Kong, New York, Singapore, and Bangkok, 
and the memories of the traditional Christmas is very different. Now, uh, uh, Sean, now you should play the video. Yeah. Proudly ranking on number two is the most Christmassy market of Switzerland. Traditional, cheesy and festively atmosphere, this is how your experience is going to be over there. It is one of the largest and most known Christmas markets in Switzerland and it's open on a daily base. Montreux Christmas market is full of beautifully decorated stalls, but there is even more magic in the air. Literally. On an hourly base from 5 p.m. onwards, you can witness Santa flying above the lake. Definitely for food enthusiasts, this market is very interesting. All in all, the Montreux Christmas market is very unique, distinct and yet very authentic. A highlight not to be missed during Christmas season here in Switzerland. Basel is a city that loves to compete with other cultural centers in Switzerland. Whether it is with Lucerne regarding the carnival, or with Zurich about football, or who hosts the most beautiful Christmas market. The entire market is made with much love and this really shows. The one here at Basel is more traditional. The focus here is more on the sale of goods especially such that are typical for this season. Points of interest in Basel are the market in front of the Balfirso church or the Münsterplatz. Both are nearby, roughly five minutes apart by walk. Another market is held at Klein Basel at the Rheingasse. As Basel is located at the Länderdreieck, the country's triangle, you will see that some influence from France and Germany is present. Both countries are known for hosting amazing Christmas markets. However, this year Basel beats them all. In this year it has been ranked as Europe's second most beautiful Christmas market after Budapest. In our city of Lucerne, tourists come from all over the world to see the Christmas light decoration, hear the choir singing, and experience the cold and snowy Christmas atmosphere. We see Japanese tourist group, we see Asian families, we see young backpackers listening and even singing with the choirs, eating chestnut and enjoying the light of the breathtaking decoration and atmosphere. We are sitting here now at the Lakeside BHMS school building in Lucerne, and we have students from over 80 different nations. Many of them never seen a real Christmas. The atmosphere uh, from the music to the smell of cookies, the light and the gifts of the uh, leave a lifelong egg, egg memory to them and the joy for us. 
I do not know many students or any of them who have not listened and tried to cookies, tried to glue wine, a warm wine beverage, and have not listened to the choirs on the street, just outside of here. We wish you all a blessed Christmas and a very happy, good, healthy, and successful New Year. Goodbye. Okay, thank you very much. before <laughs> this is the first time and i think it's a very nice one so thank you all there's our speaker to stay with us today so we have the different part they are telling us about the stories of the christmas even though they are cooking their the sheet fondue right uh-huh um to show us how the sweet people have to enjoy the christmas with the Christmas meal. So this is time for the question and answer, like everyone waiting. And if you have the question, you can leave in the Zoom chat, or if anyone would like to ask tears, you can um, open your microphones and asking or write your hands, and I can ask you to ask the questions. Um, even though I gonna have, we have there are some questions on Facebook. <clears throat> They're asking about the um, the sheet fondues, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're asking that um, when the cookings of the sheet fondues, um, what kind of sheets they are using to mixing the fondues? Mm -hmm. And oh, <laughs> we need a chef. <laughs> Yeah, I'm answer. here, ready. <laughs> so the Thai people interesting in cooking. <laughs> so asking, uh, when they when they make the sheet fondue. So the, we are not in Switzerland, so we have the limited of the kind of sheet that selling in supermarket. We we not have much of them, and just only some kind of sheets that popular in in Asia. So they asking that what kind of sheet that can do fondue, and uh, we need to add in the the alcohol beverage or we can add another thing else if we don't bring alcohol mm -hmm. okay so great question first of all we'll ask that um, very important to remember Swiss cheese is available all over the world and important is that Swiss cheese made here in Switzerland when it's exported always has a Swiss flag on the label It's only Swiss cheese which is allowed to be made in Switzerland 
which is allowed to have the Swiss flag on. So if you're in Indonesia, if you're in China, if you're in India, if you're in North America, wherever you may be, the Swiss cheese is available, but always look for the one. If there's two or three types of Emmental or two or three types of Gruyere, always look for the one with the label with the Swiss flag on, and that's the one you should use for your cheese fondue or just for eating in its plain state. And remember, it's a balance. Food is a balance. That lovely cheese is nicely balanced against some nice fruits and grapes or apple or pear, also nashi pear, an Asian pear. So uh, buy Swiss cheese with the Swiss flag on, and it's good for everything. Ah, I see. So you got your answer here. So they have another asking again about food. <laughs> They're asking about the fruit cake. Uh -huh. So in Thailand, when we're thinking about Christmas um, or the gift in the Christmas event, the fruit cake it pop up in our our head. So why is have to be made the food food cake is very heavy. I don't know as what is making conform, and we. I just know that the food, uh, the fruit, have to soaking in alcohol for the long time. Why we have to do in something like this, and why it's so heavy when 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 we make the the fruit cake? Mm -hmm. So when I was downstairs in the kitchen, we had that lovely Italian panettone, which is like oh. a light bread. It's, it's actually it, it it has to it has to uh, develop in a, an approving oven for for many hours and it becomes really really light. It can rip it apart like a cake. Actually, that one's really light. Although it was really big, that one only weighed a couple of hundred grams um, because really light. But there are in different parts of Europe these heavy fruit cakes that you refer to, and we make these normally sort of October time, uh, November the very latest, and soaking all of your fruits and then putting them into a cake and baking and then basting with um, a sugar syrup over a couple of weeks before Christmas so that at Christmas time it's, it's been there for eight weeks and it's been soaked in sugar syrup and very heavy. And this is back to our tradition in Northern Europe where a few hundred years ago we had no refrigeration and you know how it is, fruits are always ripe on the tree at the same time. So we used to have to cultivate them all. And what do we do with them? Make jam, make pies, but we also put some into some sugar syrup or sometimes into some alcohol to, to preserve. And we would keep them for the Christmas time. So all this preservation of food is from our European food heritage from hundreds of years ago. And of course, back then, people didn't have so much great things to eat as we do today. And so therefore, it was a real treat to have these wonderful soaked fruits made into a cake, heavy filling, and it was cold outside and it just kept us going. Mm -hmm. I see. So the another question is asking the Mr. Bruno's. <laughs> and as yes, as you say that uh, you see the different Christmas festival in different country, right? So the yes. so the, the student asking that what do you what do you think about the Christmas in Europe and compare with the in Asia or in Thailand? Well, here in Switzerland, at least, there is still some traditions going on. If I compare, I worked for 15 years at the Rockefeller Center. There you don't have too many traditional Christmas feelings. It's just tourism. It's commercialized. Don't get me wrong. It's absolutely beautiful. It's spectacular. But it has a different origin. Here it comes from the tradition, like the kitchen chef said, we cooked heavy food because the winter time was cold. The nights very long, the days very short to warm up because the heating system were at that time not around. Where I think of New York or Singapore, where it is very commercialized, and less this tradition like we still can experience here very nicely in the surf. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, I see, I see. So have you ever seen something in Asia that's not not, not seen in Europe in the Christmas? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Uh, well, the decorations, which I know from Singapore, Bangkok, uh. Uh, are very nice. Mm. However, like I said, it's more a seasonal event than a Christmas event as we know it from over here. Ah, because right. already as a child, the Santa Claus is coming to you and you have to tell him a little bit. We saw that on the video 
And this is a very high celebration, which I don't think we see anywhere in the world. But I tell you the truth, I spent Christmas also in Singapore, which uh, was absolutely breathtaking. Ah, uh, I see. So uh, the another question for Chef, I think this question has come from the student. Um, he asking that, uh, the gingerbread is made from the real gingers? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, we call it, no, it's true. The question is valid because you, you say ginger, people think it's made from ginger. And it has a little bit of that sort of gingery kind of um, uh, flavor in the back of the throat when you're eating it. But it's made oh. from like a gingerbread spice, we call it. So it's kind of a, oh. a dark, the color, the color of the spice is the same color as the cake. So it's like a mixture oh. of mace and nutmeg and a bit of cinnamon. Oh bit of ground coriander and a few different sort of secret blends of different uh, spices, dried spices, mm -hmm. which we bake into the cake. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives it its lovely color along with the molasses and the lovely flavor and aroma, of course, when it's baking. And even when it's coming out of the oven, it's nice and shiny. We brush it with a nice uh, uh, bit of molasses and then it stays nice and preserved for a few days. And um, yeah, that with a nice cup of tea is lovely. Yes, of course. So now you know it's made, not made from gingers. <laughs> so um, I think the, we are run out of the question now and we are run out of time for one hour for the our webinar for today. But before we leaving, I think everyone would like to take a photo together, right? Mm -hmm. So please open your camera so we can take a photo together. Um, we have the many participants here, around 47 people. So could you open the camera, please, so we can take photos together with um, KMATL and BHMS. Mm -hmm. Wow, we have a lot of students today and many participants. I think so many students have come to join us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it... A little bit for they open the cameras. Mm -hmm. So set up your look, <laughs> your hair and your face. So I believe everyone is look pretty <laughs> for now. So we should take a photo together. So one, two, three, smile. Okay, another one, please. One, two, three, smiling. Okay. Okay, I think everyone is smile and they cannot wait to join the Christmas event for today. So I would like to thank you all of the speakers that stay with us today, the chef Leonard and Mr. Bruno to give us the knowledge about the Christmas. And also the student who are come to the participant today, we have the certificate you can scan from the in front of the screen. So they're showing the screen now. So you can uh, scanning and you get the certificate for the webinar today. So I very appreciate that we have special guests is really far, far away from Thailand and we share the special event this together. I hope everyone enjoyed this webinar and sorry, and finally, I would like to say it as Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's for everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>